What's up everybody? What's going on? Justin here to do my Ring of Honor 2016 Best in the World pay-per-view review. It was tonight. Ended about five minutes ago, ten minutes ago. Pretty damn good show. I, I enjoyed it. If I give it a rating, one to ten, I'd say it was a it's about a seven seven point five. Pretty damn good show. In one of the matches, we saw a lot of blood. I'm a big fan of blood, big fan of violence in wrestling. That was good to see on pay-per-view. Here's a review. Up first, we had Kyle O'Reilly kick off the show going up against New Japan Pro Wrestler. Can't pronounce the guy's name. Not even going to even try. Kyle O'Reilly and him, they had a damn good match. It was a good match. New Japan Pro Wrestler worked over and injured Kyle O'Reilly. Looked like he injured his knee. Like his knee buckled or his knee went out. I'm sure he's just selling it, but the guy's selling it really good because I actually thought maybe Kyle O'Reilly's actually injured. But I'm sure he wasn't. Just gotta make sure it's recording. Anyways, so he's selling his knee really good. New Japan Pro Wrestler grabbed him, did a dragon screw leg whip, that was pretty awesome, worked over his knee a lot of the match, did a flying drop kick off the ring apron to Kyle O'Reilly, that was good. Good submission, a lot of good submission wrestling in this match. A lot of knees and kicks, I mean a lot of kicks from Kyle O'Reilly to the outside, to the guy's chest, his opponent's chest. Finish was Kyle O'Reilly, was Hitting a lot of knee, his knees were worked over, but the finish was brain buster. But then it's kicked out. Kyle O'Reilly hit a brain buster. He kicked out, and then right after he kicked out, he jumped over, grabbed the arm, and locked on the arm bar. I believe it's his finisher. So Kyle O'Reilly wins. New Japan Pro Wrestler taps out. Kyle O'Reilly gets a good victory for him. Up next, we had match number two, which was ACH against Silas Young, the real man. That's what he calls himself. Silas Young, I believe, is actually from my hometown of Milwaukee. But I'm not a fan of his anyways. So, Silas Young, ACH had a pretty good match. It was pretty short. Uh, Silas Young worked over ACH's back throughout the match. ACH did great selling. And ACH wins by hitting the 450 splash. I guess they called it the Midnight, uh, Midnight Star. That was the name of the, his 450 splash. But basically it was a 450. ACH wins. Good victory for him. Up next we had... Roderick Strong in probably his uh, final Ring of Honor pay-per-view because Roderick Strong, it's been reported, it's even been reported on ROHWrestling.com that Roderick Strong is leaving Ring of Honor after tomorrow night's show. I believe they do TV tapings tomorrow night after Best in the World and that will be Roderick Strong's last Ring of Honor show. I just want to say thank you, Roderick Strong. You've been great in Ring of Honor. You've busted your ass, and hopefully you show up in the WWE on the main roster and you're drafted, or hopefully you show up in uh, NXT because Roderick Strong, damn good worker. He deserves to be in the WWE. The guy's damn good. And he's busted his ass for years and years and years to go to the WWE if he's gonna go there and I don't know why he wouldn't I don't know why WWE and Triple H wouldn't want to sign a guy like Roderick Strong to work in NXT because he's damn good he should be signed by the WWE hopefully he is so this was the third match Roderick Strong basically his final Ring of Honor pay-per-view match if you hear some noise in the background Somebody's doing dishes in my house. Anyway, anyways, Roderick Strong his final pay-per-view match against Mark Briscoe. This was pretty very good. This was a very good match. It was pretty damn entertaining. 
I had Mark Briscoe winning. I predicted he would win in my best in the world predictions. And I was right. Mark Briscoe won. As I said, it's a very good match. And after the match, crowd was chanting and they shook hands. Mark Briscoe, Roderick Strong shook hands, did the coat of honor. And after that, the crowd was chanting, thank you, Roddy, thank you, Roddy. Talking about Roderick Strong. Again, thank you, Roderick Strong, for all the time you did in Ring of Honor. You did great stuff in Ring of Honor. Up next, we had the six-man tornado rules, six-man tag tornado rules matchup. This was wild. This was pretty crazy. It got pretty wild, a lot of outside-of-the-ring brawling. Between all six guys, you had the team of War Machine and Moose taking on the team of the Bullet Club. The Young Bucks and Adam Cole, baby, Adam Cole. <coughs> so the Bullet Club against War Machine and Moose, as I said, this match had a ton of action in it. A lot of action. Could have went a little bit longer, but I was okay with the amount of time it lasted. It, it was good. During this match, as I said, a ton of action. All six guys, I take that back. All four guys, four guys in the match, looked very good. I'm talking about Moose, War Machine, and Adam Cole. They looked very good. I'm not a fan of the Young Bucks. They did their normal stuff, their gimmick, super kicks. They did their 200 super kicks that they do every match. Not a fan of theirs. They look like 12 year old girls. I'm not a fan of the Young Bucks. I mean, they're they're athletic. They got great athletic ability, but I'm not a fan of theirs. As wrestlers, I'm not a fan of them. But I am a fan of Adam Cole, War Machine, and Moose. So all four of those guys looked very good. And talking about during the match, you had. This was pretty funny. You had uh, Bullet Club. They would, the Young Bucks were doing this to Moose, going to sing Suck It, and then the crowd had to repeat Suck It. I wonder who they stole that from. Just, you know, they stole it from somebody that, uh, well, was in the WWF during the Attitude Era. So they were saying Suck It, and then Adam Cole, when he punched Moose, he put his hands up and say, Adam Cole, baby. That is pretty good. That is funny, funny shit. And then Moose took over and started punching all three of them, and they were standing next to each other. He's punching all three of them, and then he's going like this, and the crowd was going along with them, going, Moose. Yeah, that was pretty good shit. But then they did a triple super kick. Triple super kicked Moose. He fell out of the ring. Now I think that's super kick number 10. I don't know. I lost count. There were a lot of super kicks in this match. Probably probably close to 30. I didn't count. I'm not joking. There were probably close to at least 20 super kicks. Which is pretty ridiculous. Because we had a lot of triple super kicks. Also, during this match, you had Hanson. The guy hit a moot saw. He's like over 300 pounds. Or at least 280. Hanson of War Machine hit a moot saw. And when he was going down to the mat, he was super kicked in the stomach by the Young Bucks. That was pretty insane. That, that didn't look very safe. Because if Moose would have got kicked in the face, the guy could have landed on his head or something. But... Good thing the Young Bucks protected him and kicked him in the stomach so Hanson did not get injured and land on his head after the moot saw. That's damn impressive. A big guy like Hanson pulling off a moot saw. That's damn impressive. Um, so the finish was Bullet Club wins. And uh, what was good about this match also, and what was entertaining, was Matt Taven, formerly of the Kingdom. Matt Taven, he's out with a knee injury. I believe he's rehabbing his knee injury. Anyways, Matt Taven was on commentary, and he, he was damn good on commentary. He was ripping the Young Bucks. It was funny as hell. He kept ripping them. So Matt Taven on commentary, that was fucking great. 
That was great to hear and great to listen to and damn entertaining. Bullet Club wins a tornado six-man tag. It was action-packed. But I'm not a fan of all the super kicks. Uh, enough already. That's just high spot. The Young Bucks are the high spot fest. That's all they are. Up next, we had match number five was, what was it? Match number five was for the Ring of Honor Tag Team Titles. Ring of Honor Tag Team Titles. On the line, the Addiction, Frankie Kazarian, Christopher Daniels defending the tag titles. Up against the Motor City Machine Guns. This was going to be a damn good tag team match because both of these teams know each other very well. They worked in TNA against each other a lot of times. I think they had tag matches together in TNA. If they didn't, they worked against each other in singles. So Motor City Machine Guns, Daniels, and Kazarian, they were in TNA. They know each other very well. They have great chemistry in the ring together. This was a great tag title match. Pretty damn good. Wasn't the match of the show, but it was good. It was entertaining. The crowd was pretty soft. I mean, I'm talking about soft. S-A-W-F-T. They were soft. The crowd was soft for this tag match. They weren't hyped. They weren't even loud. They were quiet. They were like sitting on their hands. I don't know what was wrong with the crowd, but they were weak during the tag title match. The crowd was very weak. I don't know what's up with them, but whatever. The Addiction wins and retains a Ring of Honor tag titles. I'm glad the Addiction retained. Also glad that uh, the main event, Ring of Honor World Champion, also retained. Happy about that. Up next we had the Fight Without Honor match. This was probably, to me, this match was probably the match of the pay-per-view. And it was damn violent. It was damn bloody. And I love that kind of wrestling. I'm not a fan of garbage wrestling like uh, CZW used to do where I don't know if they do it anymore. I don't care if they do it anymore. But when CZW used to pull out freaking weed whackers. I'm talking about the, those things you cut grass with. They got motors on. They pull out weed whackers and cut each other in the arms with them. It was ridiculous, and then blood be squirting out the guy's arms. It was that's that's too much for me. If you're talking about hardcore wrestling with blood and guts and violence, ECW did it right. Sometimes their matches did get out of control, too out of control. But they at least they didn't fucking use uh, power tools and lawnmowers and. Uh, Weed whackers, or at least ECW didn't go that far. Is what CZW did using all those power tools and uh, for less than light bulbs. I'm not a fan of that type of garbage wrestling. I'm not a fan of a guy getting a, a for less than light bulb broken over his head and then getting a weed whacker to cut him all over his arms and chest. Uh, that is ridiculous. I'm not a fan of power tools also in wrestling. That's stupid. That's that's garbage wrestling. That's not hardcore. And the people that would cheer that, seeing a guy get cut with a weed whacker, if you would cheer that, you're fucking retarded. So, up next was a fight without honor. Match number six of the pay-per-view, fight without honor. Steve Carino returning to the ring. First time in, I don't know, two or three years. Up against his arch enemy, B.J. Whitmore. This was a fight without honor, and it would get bloody and pretty fast. Steve Carino comes out as a white shirt on, white pants, and he takes, I believe he had a hood on, takes his hood off and shows he bleached his hair again, like he had it bleached in ECW. And he looked more blonde and yellow than bleach, but I think it was... Uh, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was just blonde or whatever. So Carino no longer had dark hair. Went back to his old school look in ECW when he had blonde hair. 
BJ Whitmore comes out, he's wearing white tights and white gear, like like he's a savior and an angel. I don't know what he's wearing. It's weird. So the match starts. Right away they go to the outside. Steve Carino looks under the ring, pulls out a table, sets a, a table at ringside. And then they get in and they brawl on the outside for a bit. Then they get back in the ring. They threw a whole bunch of chairs in the ring. So chairs were laying in the ring. Then Steve Greeno gets punched right in the forehead. Like right about here. Gets punched really hard. A stiff punch. Steve Greeno gets busted open the hard way. I believe. Or maybe he cut himself a tiny bit. So when BJ Whitmore connected. The blood just started coming down his face. And the blood started flowing. And coming out of his head like a faucet. I mean, it wasn't dripping, like, spraying out of his head, but it wasn't as bad as uh, Eddie Guerrero at Judgment Day 05. He got busted open and bled way too much. He cut himself way too deep. Carino cut himself, or maybe got busted open the hard way, but there was a lot of blood covering Carino's entire face. So he probably did blade a little bit. But it was controlled. At least it wasn't squirting and dripping and dripping out of his head like it was to Eddie Guerrero at Judgment Day 04. If you didn't see Judgment Day 04, well, watch it. If you have the network, watch it and see how badly Eddie Guerrero bled. He bled a lot. I've, I've never seen any uh, uh, other wrestler in my history of watching wrestling. I've never seen anybody else bleed that much than I saw Eddie Guerrero bleed. That night. At Judgment Day 04. So. Carino. Gets busted up in the hard hard way. And probably did blade also. If you don't know what blading is. They uh, hold a little razor blade. Probably hide it under their tape. On their hands. And they just do this. They don't got to do a long cut. Just do a tiny little cut. And your blood will flow. So, Carino's bleeding a lot. I mean, he was bleeding a hell of a lot. Like, back in his ECW days. He was bleeding a lot. And then, uh, BJ Whitmore. Here's a couple of things that happened in the matches that uh, I'm going to read now. Carino, as I said, got busted on the hard way. And BJ Whitmore set up a table in the corner of the ring. Tried to do a T-bone suplex. Some type of suplex. To me it looked like it was a T-bone. Tazplex. That Taz used to throw in ECW. Anyways a T-bone suplex. Tries to suplex Carino. Through the table in the corner. But the table the first time. Carino just went up against the table. It did not break. I don't know why it didn't break. I'm sure it was a gimmick table. But it didn't want to break. So then BJ Whitmore again. Does the suplex. And then finally the table breaks. The second time. I'm sure Carino uh, wasn't happy that it didn't break the first time. Because he had to go through it again. So then it breaks, finally. That was a cool spot. And then BJ Whitmore turned his back. Carino somehow got a beer bottle. He got an empty beer bottle. BJ Whitmore turns around. And before this, before Carino is busted open, uh, BJ Whitmore... He put his hands down. He was trying to block. Carino had a chair up like this. And Carino could have cracked him on the top of his head. But uh, wrestlers who really shouldn't take chair shots to the head anymore. Because we're in 2016. So K BJ Whitmore puts his hands down. Because he realizes Carino is not hitting him on the head with a chair. And then Whitmore goes like this to Carino. And Carino drops the chair and slaps him across the face. After that. Carino had the beer bottle. BJ Whitmore turns around, bam, smashes a beer bottle on Whitmore's bald head. And of course, I th I'm pretty, I don't know if it's a gimmick bottle, but it looked real as hell. I mean, how it broke, it was probably glass. I don't know if it's re a real bottle or not, but it looked damn real when it broke. So the beer bottle breaks over his head. B.J. Whitmore goes down. Of course, he probably bladed. He's busted open badly. He is bleeding profusely, bleeding like a stuffed pig getting cut. Carino's also busted open and bleeding like a stuffed pig. 
So they're both bloodied and beaten and battered and bruised. And this match was brutal, it was violent, and it was damn bloody, and I loved it. So, after that, the crowd is chanting, this is awesome. They started chanting, this is awesome, after, I believe, BJ got the beer bottle broken over his head. And then Carino pulls out of the doctor's bag. A doctor came down the ringside. He pulls out of his bag a pair of scissors. And then he throws it down. He wasn't, Carino wasn't going to use his scissors. Then he pulls out a bottle of rubbing alcohol. He pulls out a bottle of rubbing alcohol. I'm sure there is water in it. But still, it was pretty cool. I mean, people watch wrestling to... It's like a movie. You don't want to think, oh, that's water. That's not rubbing alcohol. You want to think it's rubbing alcohol. So he has a bottle of rubbing alcohol. BJ Whitmore sitting on his ass in the ring. Carino opens it, pours some of it, and it falls on BJ Whitmore's head. He rolls around selling it like it burned like hell. That was a pretty damn awesome. Pretty awesome spot. Never seen another wrestler bring out rubbing alcohol and... Pour it on his opponent's bloody head. If somebody did do that, I'm sure it'd burn like hell. So Whitmore is bleeding a lot and gets rubbing alcohol poured on top of his head. It was a sick spot, but I loved it. Chance fans are chanting again, this is awesome. And they're chanting probably, holy shit, this is awesome. Chants like that. Then Carino gets a whole bunch of coins. I don't know if they're quarters, but he starts filling up a, his sock, or somebody's sock. He starts filling up a sock of cor coins, so he could crack B.J. Whitmer with it. Instead, B.J. Whitmer has a roll of quarters in his hand, hits Carino with the roll of quarters. They go flying everywhere. So Carino's knocked out cold. Quarters to the head. And then Carino finally gets up and hits a Kevin Owens... Kevin Steen package pile driver onto B.J. Whitmore, but B.J. Whitmore kicks out of that. Then they're both laid out in the ring. They're not moving. They're both laid out. They are both beaten, battered, bruised, and bloody. And then the lights go out. And I didn't think the generator blew out. I thought, well, somebody's coming out. The lights come back on. A guy is standing in the middle of the ring. With a purple uh, robe on. With a big hood over his head. So you couldn't see who it was. Takes the hood off. It's Kevin Sullivan. Wrestling legend Kevin Sullivan. The Taskmaster. I'm not going to bring up the Dungeon of Doom. Because that was god awful. But the Taskmaster. T Kevin Sullivan. The devil himself appears at Ring of Honor Best in the World. It was pretty awesome to see him appear. And then he, after he took his hood off, he had a spike. And then he looks at B.J. Whitmore like he's going to spike him, looks at Steve Carino. They're on their knees by the side of Kevin Sullivan. He's in the middle of them. Instead, Kevin Sullivan looks at Carino, bam, hits him with a spike. Spike to the head. Carino's knocked out cold. And then uh, one... Two, three, B.J. Whitmore covers him and gets the victory in a fight without honor match. Also, a spot I didn't mention, something that happened. After he broke the beer bottle, Carino is holding onto it. And the sharp edges, and he starts sticking in B.J. Whitmore's head like this. And digging away on his head. That was pretty awesome. That was sick, but it was awesome. I loved it. So... When uh, when blood is, when a feud comes to the finish, the matches should have blood in them and should be very violent. That's just my opinion. I'm a fan of violence in wrestling, and I do miss it, especially in WWE. So that uh, fight without honor match, it was damn good. Probably the match of the pay per view. Um, next we had the um, TV title, Ring of Honor TV Championship on the line was next. 
Bobby Fish, the Ring of Honor TV champ, defending against Dalton Castle for the TV title. This was pretty good. Dalton Castle showed a lot of heart, put up a good fight, but Bobby Fish wins and retains the TV title. I shouldn't have predicted that Dalton Castle was going to win. I don't know what I was thinking because it was pretty clear that uh, Bobby Fish was going to retain here. And he did retain. But Don Castle, the guy put up a pretty damn good fight. So up next we had the main event. Jay Lethal defending. And so far the tag champs retained. And so far the world TV champion retained. Final title match of the pay-per-view. Jay Lethal defending the Ring of Honor world title against Jay Briscoe. They main evented Best in the World 2015, which was a damn good match. And Jay Lethal won the world title one year ago. One year ago, Jay Lethal won the world title. He's been the world heavyweight champion in Ring of Honor for one full year. Congrats to Jay Lethal. The guy's entertaining as hell. He's damn good on the mic. He's damn good in the ring. He's great. He's great world champion. In my opinion, he's one of the best world champions in wrestling today. So, Lethal, Jay Briscoe, a rematch. Bris Lethal versus Briscoe 2, rematch one year in the making. <coughs> so it was good. It was very good. Damn good main event. I'd say it was the second best match of the night, in my opinion. This was pretty damn good. And the pay-per-view opened with uh, Jay Lethal and Jay Briscoe video package where they were cutting promos against each other. And they were yelling, I am the best in the world. And I'm the best in the world. And stuff like that. It was a good video package to open best in the world. Some of the spots that happened in this match and before it, before the main event, I almost forgot to mention... The uh, All Night Express comes out. Rep Titus, Caprice Coleman, and what's his name? Kenny King. Caprice Coleman's dressed up like a minister or a preacher. He's dressed up like a preacher, minister type gimmick. The Cabinet, they're calling themselves The Cabinet. They cut a promo for uh, about over five minutes. Talking and the crowd didn't enjoy it. Because this was right before the main event. The crowd was restless. They were probably blown up and tired and wanted to go home. So the crowd was start chanting, this is boring, this is boring. And I agree, it was pretty boring. Anyways, the cabinet talks and says that they are now known as the cabinet. And they brought up, they even brought up Kurt Angle and said he put out a shirt saying make wrestling great again. And that... Kurt Angle could join them in the cabinet anytime he wants. Maybe that's a tease that Kurt Angle might work in Ring of Honor sometime this year. I don't know. Supposedly, WWE and our reports are Kurt Angle will not be returning to the WWE for the draft or the brand split. I don't believe that. Because uh, Triple H said that WWE did not even have Samoa Joe on their radar. That they weren't looking to sign Samoa Joe at all. And what did they do? A couple, I don't know, a couple months later, a month later, they signed Samoa Joe and brought him into NXT. So don't believe the rumors. I don't believe that Kurt Angle is not coming back to WWE. Why wouldn't he come back? To accept the Hall of Fame induction and a couple more matches. And to help American Alpha. I mean, I don't know why WWE wouldn't contact Kurt Angle to return and do a couple matches. And then go on the Hall of Fame. Why wouldn't they? They should. Because Kurt Angle belongs in the WWE Hall of Fame. And he also belongs... He also deserves to be back in the WWE. The guy busts his ass, broke his neck, like had like three neck surgeries when he's in the WWE so he could keep wrestling for you guys. But maybe Kurt Angle will show up in Ring of Honor before WWE, I don't know. But don't believe that rumor. J. 
just because Dave Mez, Mez, whatever the guy's name is, Dave Mez, I don't remember the, I can't, who cares who he is, you know who he is, a wrestling journalist, he said Kurt Angle will not be coming back to WWE, I don't believe it, until the draft is over, and if it's still, if it's SummerSlam time and Kurt Angle doesn't return at SummerSlam, then I'll believe he's not coming back. But till then, I don't believe it. So the cabinet is done, and they reminded me of the New Day, how they were cutting their promo. I don't know why. The cabinet just reminded me of the New Day. New Day is way more, 100 times better and way more entertaining. So I'm next. As I said, the main event, Jay Lethal, Jay Briscoe for the Ring of Honor World title. During this match, you had Tyler Hendricks. And before it started, both of these guys made their wrestling, pro wrestling debuts in 2001. So they've been around 15, 16 years. They both made their debuts as teenagers. I think they're both 18 years old. One of them might have been 19. During this match... Tyler Hendricks, a pretty hot manager at Jay Lethal, got thrown out. Thrown out from ringside because she interfered. She jumped on Jay Briscoe on the outside of the ring. She actually jumped on him and attacked him. So she gets thrown out. And then a fight starts between Mandy, the uh, Ring of Honor, one of the Ring of Honor women of Honor, Mandy. She actually follows me on Twitter, so God bless her. Uh, very, very nice to her fans is Mandy on Twitter. I believe it's at Mandy L L E O N. That, I think that's her name, L E O N, and it might be X O something. It might be X O after the L E O N. Anyway, she is a great person to follow on Twitter. Pretty damn good women's wrestler, and she's pretty damn hot. So then Mandy gets pissed off and st because she's sitting at ringside. I believe she's a timekeeper. She's sitting at the ringside table the entire show, I believe. So Mandy gets up and tries to run at Teller Hendricks and attack her. And basically to try to show her to get the fuck out of here and leave ringside. So Mandy wanted to fight Taylor Hendricks. That was pretty awesome. And then the crowd started marking out and started popping for that. And then Mandy sat back down and the match continued. Jay Lethal or Jay Briscoe during this hit a he hit a lethal injection on Jay Lethal. And then he hit a Jay Driller after the lethal injection by Dr by Jay Briscoe after the lethal injection by Jay Briscoe. Then he hit a Jay Driller. And that was that was epic. Two finishers within like 10 seconds. And then one, two, lethal kicks out of that. Damn impressive. Jay Lethal kicked out of a lethal injection and a Jay Driller. Then the finish was you know, lethal on the top rope. Jay Lethal, Jay Briscoe fighting on the top rope. Jay Lethal hits off the top rope, hits a lethal injection. And then after that, lethal injection, he gets up on his feet, does a springboard handstand, springboard off the ropes into another lethal injection to Jay Briscoe. So Briscoe took two of them, one off the top rope and then another lethal injection in the ring. Then after that, it was over. One, two, three, Jay Lethal wins and retains a Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship it was a damn good main event. And at the end, both guys shake hands, showing each other respect. They had a great match. They put on a great performance. They had great chemistry. The main event was pretty damn good. It was nice to see them shake hands and do the code of honor at the end of it. And then the pay-per-view went off the air and ended. I will stick and stand by that the match of the night was Steve Carino versus BJ Whitmore because of the violence and the, all the blood. I really enjoyed that. Second match of the night was the main event. Lethal versus Briscoe 2. I would like to see a Lethal versus Briscoe 3. Why not? 
at the next pay-per-view have Lethal vs. Briscoe 3. I would really enjoy it. Tonight, Best in the World 2016, pretty damn good pay-per-view. I give it 7.5. Follow me on Twitter at TNA WWE Guy, also at NXT WWE Guy. I don't tweet much from at NXT WWE Guy, but it's still my other Twitter account, so follow me there. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my channel. If you've got any friends that are big wrestling fans, big Ring of Honor fans, Tell them to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe to my channel. Do it now. If you do it already, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you follow me on Twitter already, I really appreciate it. So I hope you enjoy my Ring of Honor Best in the World 2016 review. The show was pretty damn good. And it was worth my money that I put down to order it. Bye for now, everybody.